Hallelujah. God, we just worship you tonight. Aren't you thankful that you don't have to have that coal against your lips to be purified anymore? Isn't it awesome that God has come down and through his son Jesus has purified you once and forever? Oh, thank you, Jesus. And in doing so has empowered you to live so much further above than what you, what you even believe possible. God, it's my hope tonight that as we open up your word and as we study your word, that God, we can begin to see higher than our belief. <laughs> God, let us all right now just take the stand that was taken in the Bible where he said, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. I think I know, but if it's wrong what I think I know, help me know something that I should know. Mm. God, help us tonight to think higher and better of ourselves than where we're at right now. Let us begin to find value, the value that you have placed on us. Hmm. God, bring us into the holy of holies. Wow, he told me he did. <laughs> as soon as I said that, he said, I already have. You are, your place is in the holy of holies. The spirit of God that lives in us brings us in the holy of holies. The blood that cleanses us and makes us whole brings us into that holy of holies. We have the right as rightful heirs to stand in front of the throne of God and make our request known to him personally. Jesus, Jesus. Speak to us tonight through your holy word, Lord Jesus. And the people said, amen. Let that be true in your lives tonight. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to continue on tonight in our Holy Spirit teaching. He continues to unveil himself to me in so many different ways where the Holy Spirit's concerned. I just keep learning more and more. And tonight is some keys to a Holy Spirit-led life. How many of you out here tonight, you don't have to raise your hand. Jesus already knows who you are. How many of you here tonight know that really, if we were to be honest with ourselves, we run this thing wide open and kind of however it goes is however it goes and we just make decisions just like this one after another and, and we're just flying through life. Like I said, don't raise your hand. This this is really not for you guys. This is mainly for the people who listen online. <laughs> I wish I could go back in a lot of different areas where I just made some snap decisions and did some things from my youth all the way up that you could go back and change. And if you have that thought in your mind right now, I wish I could go back and that was a snap decision that was made based and built on all the wrong principles that turned out to be exactly what you thought it was going to be to begin with. That's deep for Wednesday, ain't it? That's deep stuff right there. So I want to talk to you tonight about relationships and friendships, some keys to a spirit-filled life in these areas. One of those keys to a spirit life is to know your boundaries. You've got to begin to know who you can and cannot let into your life. 
it's not just it's not just a good idea. It's scripturally based. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it says this, it says, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good morals, good habits. If you get into the wrong relationship, you get into the wrong friendship, it will definitely directly influence your future. Spirit-filled life, a spirit-filled life, a spirit-led life usually slows down quite a bit. You're not running ahead haplessly and just moving wherever and going whatever and doing whatever, and then you look back and go, wow, that was a mess. A spirit-led life, most of the times, if you read through and you look through God's word as your compass on what you're going to be, most of the time, you can find it directly in the Bible, and I'm going to help you tonight with some friendship and relationship keys that you really need to slow down and look at. And even at my age, I'm still amazed at the bad choices I make where friendships, relationships, things like that still occur. Because I'm one of those people, I just think the best of everybody. I just think everybody's great and everybody's for you and everybody loves you and, and you know, you just go around picking daisies all the time and it's always just wonderful. But the truth of the matter is, in a field full of daisies, there's a lot of stuff that's hiding in that tall grass that'll hurt you pretty quick. And wisdom and godly knowledge can keep you out of a lot of stuff. Amen. Bad company corrupts good character. Some, some different, uh, different Bible have it different. This one is don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Some of them say bad company corrupts good character. Have you ever been around somebody that doesn't quite have the character status that you have and that person's lifestyle begins to bleed over onto you. You didn't want it to happen. You didn't plan for it to happen. And really, at first, you didn't even see it happening. But at some point in time, you get to a place and you think, what? How? How did I get here? Well, that's because bad company, evil company, corrupts good habits. Is it, is it impossible to believe that there really is only two there really is only good and evil. I mean, when, when you start slowing down and you begin to take ownership of your life and you start taking ownership of your Christianity, your walk, there really is only two uh, ways that you're going to go. There's God's plan for your life and there's the other. The one that you choose, the steps that you make and, and all the things that go with it. And... When you take ownership of your life, it comes to this place where you can't say, well, it was my sister. Well, it was them guys I was running with. Though they were evil company, though they were bad company, you always had the ability Evil company corrupts good character, good habits, moral habits. Bad company corrupts. If you just said that, bad company corrupts. That would probably be good enough because sooner or later, and no matter who you say this to, they never like it. But when it comes down to it, Christian men and women, either you're going to be influenced by them or they're going to be influenced by you. Which one is going to win? Right now, in the United States of America, I would say that we, as Christian America, are not influencing the world. I would say that we, as America, are falling right in line of the book of Revelation, where it says there will come a time where the people will call evil good and good evil. And bad company has corrupted 
good habits. I would say that with everything that's going on, it's beyond belief how far the pendulum has swung in such a short, short amount of time. I'm trying to preach here. (laughs) When you look for a friend or a relationship, what are you looking for? If I were to go through this congregation right now and I had all of you give me a one word, one or two word answer, I said, if you're looking for a friend, somebody to hang out with, somebody to be with, or you're looking for a relationship, what would you say First, what, what are you looking for first? Now, a lot of times you hear, oh, I like to be with somebody that makes me laugh. <laughs> okay. I like to be with somebody who is driven. Oh, okay. I got some written down here. Let me look at those. Someone fun, easygoing, no drama, ambitious. Someone who makes me laugh. That's who you're looking for. For a relationship, to a friendship. All those things are not character. All those things are a personality. Personality will hide character defects for a while. (laughs) Oh, when he looks at me, I just... That's fleeting. Because before long, you'll be looking at him going. (laughs) (laughs) And whatever you have been building on is what you're going to have after. (laughs) I have heard, I I have heard and experienced and seen this very thing unfold. Just Just the way we hold hands. Okay. Got married less than a year later. I don't even think he likes me. Now, how did we go from the way he touches your hand to you don't even know if he likes you? What did you see in him before that you don't see now? And what did he see in you then that he doesn't see in you now? I think we had a whole lot of personality things but no character things. I think if I wanted to look for somebody right now, I would say, are they trustworthy? Do I feel like right now I could share something with you and I can trust you with it that it would never, ever, even in the worst times, you would never hurt me with it? Are they trustworthy? Oh, I I like they makes me laugh but he will steal money out of my checking account every time I turn around. Laugh about that. (laughs) No drama. Oh, no drama because he's hiding or she's hiding everything that you're talking about until they finally land that hook. The next thing you know, you're committed in this long-term relationship And now you're thinking, oh my God, what in the world happened? Miss Mary used to sit over here all the time and when we'd talk about things like this, she'd say, yeah, when I married George, he was in debt and he never told me that when we got married. (laughs) Then she, you remember that? She laid it out there on him, boy. I guarantee you that didn't stay long. She took the reins over that chicken and counting that money. She got that straightened away right quick. But that was the one thing. I never heard her complain about anything else where George was concerned. But that one little dishonest thing stuck throughout the whole time. There's one thing she never forgot. He was dishonest about our finances when we got married. It was a character trait. George is an honorable man. I mean, there's... Few that I could stand next to and say that they're as honorable as George is now, but way, way back then there was a little secret <laughs> that we were hiding. We didn't want you to know about it. 
It's impossible that you're not going to find out, but if I can just hide it long enough for us to get together, then maybe you'll have to keep me. (laughs) How about that? Character versus personality. He was a great person. He had all this personality. He was a handsome man back then. I've seen all those pictures of when they get together. He's a handsome man. He had a good job. But he had this one little thing, and it stuck with him throughout the whole time. If you ever read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, everybody knows it about it as a love chapter. But let me tell you what it doesn't speak to. It doesn't speak to your feelings. If you've ever read into the first Corinthians, it's not really speaking about your feelings. This is telling you what a person of character does and does not break. God, isn't that so good? Yeah, I bet that's good right there. You ever thought about it like that? I didn't. Well, oh, this is what this is is how your wife breaks you down. That's what I used to think it was. This is how the the pastor's wife comes and talks to you and breaks you down for your wife and uses the Bible to do it. (laughs) That's not necessarily true. It's not what it is. This is when a man takes a woman's hand and proposes to him, this is supposedly what women hear. Women hears all of 1 Corinthians 13. I mean, word for word, they can just, even with all the birds that are singing and the flowers that are growing up all around them, they hear, he's never going to hurt me. He's never going to lie to me. He's going to take care of me every day. And no matter how hard he works through the day, when he gets home, he's going to come lift me up. Second week into the marriage, he comes home and slams the door. He works hard his hands there. Where's dinner? Oh, I'm so hurt. Wow, Cinderella. This might be the world. First Corinthians is talking about a man and a woman of character. They don't take into account a wrong that's been done. Well, you remember eight years ago when you said that I was heavy? (laughs) You asked me if those made you look big. I was new. I didn't know what to say. Still don't know what to say. I get the same look as all the rest of the men in here. <gasps> Is that my phone? Uh, someone's probably calling the pastor. I, I got to go. <laughs> Doesn't walk around all puffed up in pride. <clears throat> Please do not even look, look sideways or nothing. But has anybody ever had a friend, as soon as they get something new, they can't wait to drive by your house and come back? And here comes, here comes mama in the house. Well, I guess that makes you happy. They got a new car. Yours is six months old. doesn't get all puffed up and pride. It doesn't do all this stuff. But nine times out of ten, if we will slow down right now, listen to this quote that that I picked up today. (laughs) This one burned me. You see their fruit and believe the lie. (laughs) Wow. My mom said you was a liar. Well, then why are you still still pursuing me? He lied to you as you were dating. 
He lied to you all the way up to the marriage day, and now you're surprised that he's lying, that he's a liar as a husband? You've seen the fruit and believe the lie. Wow. I, I can... I could get a chalkboard up here right now and just write name after name after name after name. Slide that one out of the way. Name over people I have trusted, I believed in. I I just, I put all my eggs in that basket. I knew they was going to do it. I knew it. I knew they were going to get me. I co-signed for a car knowing I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> and did. <laughs> Got a house, new wife, all that stuff going on. Here they come. Hey, guess what? Some of them didn't make their payment. <laughs> and I knew before I signed the paper, their character was not there. It had never been there and it ain't there right now. But here I am. And thank goodness they come and said, you know, that's awesome what you did for us. Thank you so much. No. I did it twice. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> I am so stupid. Oh, Ooh. You see their fruit and you believe the lie. You know what a lot of you girls think? It seems like I'm picking on y'all, but I ain't. A lot of you girls think, I can change him. <laughs> Four years down the road, he's still sitting on the couch watching TV while you're working around the house doing everything and getting up and going to work. And everything in the beginning pointed toward that boy is a... Some of you guys, you with this girl, she cheated on you while you first started dating. She cheated on you halfway through the dating. And now you're surprised you've been married five years. Here we are. I'm just so upset. I just can't believe this happened to me. What? I can't believe it took five years. You see the, you see the fruit. And you believe the lie. Man, I'm, I'm called. I'm called. I'm called. Mm. The Bible tells you this in Matthew 7, verse 16. It said, you'll know them by their fruits. How many? Really? All these bad friendships, all these bad relationships you've ever got into, did you never read Matthew? Nobody's ever got in the Bible and looked through Matthew where it says, you'll know them by their fruits. Anybody that hooks up in a week, you got whatever you get, is you got it coming. When you're talking about, because now with my daughters, I made it pretty clear throughout the beginning, there's no test drives. Not going to be no run around to none of this business. We're, if you're going to date, I don't want you to get hung up on the word, word dating. No dating. You either think you found a man that's going to be your husband and you're going to spend time and look at this, but there's not going to be this, I'm an habitual dater. I'm 40 now and I've been dating since I was 16. It may not be the other person. Or do we have Matthew 6? Matthew, is it 7? We can pick any of them. Matthew 7. Matthew 7, verse 16. You'll know them by their fruits. You'll know them by their fruits. I used to wonder my girl, why my girlfriend's parents hated me. I'm a good guy. Oh, wait. I'm the only 15-year-old walking around here sleeved out with old homemade tattoos. Now that I'm this age, it's clear. I wouldn't let that boy come up and date my daughter either. 
come up here 15 years old. <laughs> let's keep on walking, son, because you ain't got life figured out yet. You just, you just go on, not mine. And he, he was right, because I was troubled right about then. But he knew my fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? If a whole pizza hut gets arrested on meth charges, there may be a problem. Centrea had the pizza hut shut down because everybody got arrested. <laughs> I'm just saying, city council, might be a problem in Centralia. It may be pretty secluded, but I'm just saying, I'd start there, work my way out. It's under new management. I don't think they'll be for hire for a while, but you can judge them by their fruits. If you went into Pizza Hut before that and the person took your order going, can I help you? <laughs> Go eat Chinese. <laughs> you have judged them by their fruits and you have judged rightfully. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Can you be that upset that if you bring people into your home and they just like a tornado and tear through things and your home is left in this big uproar. The next verse, please. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Bad. Now, I want you, I know there's some hardcore Christians in here and I'm not saying you can't go around people and you can't witness to people. That's a whole different deal. That's ministry. I'm talking about you personally. You know why this is important to you? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. What happens to you, Miss Cleo, if you share something deep inside that's very private to you, very secret, but you just need to get it out so you can heal and, and move on, and you chose the wrong person to tell it to That thing does not stop. That, that goes on and on and on. So when I'm talking about a friendship, I'm talking about somebody that I'm going to bring in close to me. I used to have so many friends, it, it was unbelievable. And then I started finding out what that meant. That meant that I had a whole lot of people that I really don't know. You can't have a whole lot of friends. You can have a whole lot of associates. You can have a lot of constituents, but you cannot have a whole lot of friends. Think of your friend base right now. How many would you go and tell something that could completely wreck you right now? I mean, would wreck you. If it got out, you'd be done, over, nothing left. How many friends? I see everybody going, right? I, yeah. I, I'm believing for one. Because I thought I had one, and, and then she trashed me on Facebook. What? That is shocking that Facebook would be part of the problem. <laughs> I look at some Facebook, and I thought, God, I never would even imagine that you talk like that. And then they post some of the stuff, and I thought, is this porn? <laughs> Should I turn this? God, I don't know them either, do I? So with that question, could wreck your life if somebody found out this thing. How many? How many friends you got? The problem is, is you found out. You know right off 
when you're standing there next to him, you know that it's either a good tree or a bad tree. Chris, you'll start to go, can I, can I talk? May, can we get together later? Because you just figured out, oh, wait a minute. You got a little, they call it a check in your spirit. Oh, wait a minute. I got a check. <laughs> Run. That's a spirit-led life where friendships and relationships are concerned when you get that check. Go. If you're wrong, you can always repent and come back later and that person will be a person of character and they say, hey, I understand. I understand. But they say, oh, you thought that about me? Whatever. <laughs> a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. There's no guesswork here. You can only hide a bad character for so long before it's going to come out. You can work with somebody and work with somebody and work with somebody and work with somebody, but you know what? God himself knew Pharaoh would never change his heart. And some things you just have to leave to God for him to change them. Some things you're not going to change in another person. Sometimes it's just the surrounding. Jesus wanted to heal that person that was blind. He looked around there and he took him by the hand because bad company corrupts good character. He took him by the hand and walked him outside of the city limits and healed his blindness. There's a whole lot of unbelievers standing around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, let me tell you about this vision God put in my heart. I'm going to do this and this. And you're going, whatever. Whatever. Crushed you, didn't it? This thing that you shared, you gave it to somebody, and they get, you're so excited about it. Oh, it's going to be so good. And this person just crushed you down like you're nothing. Whatever. You, you ain't going to do that. Hmm. Huh bad company hurts good character, hurts good morals, hurts a good person. But all you did really was you were a little higher than where they were. And if you were running at the level God has called you to run, these low laying people would not be able to affect you. Pastor Don was talking about get rid of these suckers. Get rid of these suckers that are sucking the life out of you and they're connected down low and they never produce any fruit. They never do anything. You don't ever see anything good coming to you, but they cannot wait to crush you. They're not a friend and they're not a relationship. They're a hindrance. They are a sucker. They're just attached to you to feed off of you, to feed off of your spirit and off of the, the drive that you have. You say, well, you know, they're, but they're my friends. How? What have they added to your life? Well, I, you know, I just keep praying for them. And that's worked in what way? I just keep praying for them. Hmm. Does that mean you have to be connected to them to pray for them? No. Sometimes I just have to back away from people. Sometimes I just have to know where my boundaries are. And I started this thing off with that. I started with uh, your boundaries. I think I said it, didn't I? One key to spirit-led life is to know your boundaries. Know who you decide to let into your life. You have to know that there is a time and a purpose. Some people are brought into your life as constituents and they're there because they believe in what you believe. You are a constituent to somebody. Whether you're Democrat or Republican, you're in that because you believe what they believe or what they stand for. So we are constituents to them. But they're not about to share their life with you. Y'all ain't tight. 
Obama's not going to come down and have a beer with you. There's a boundary. It's called the secret service. <laughs> when you rush in, Obama! <laughs> Handcuff, heads down the ground, feet are up, tied up to you. You're not getting any closer to Obama because you're not his friend. There are friends of his that have access that can come right in and go right to him, his daughters, his wife. They're in a relationship. The sooner you begin to live a, a spirit-filled life and you begin to be able to discern the spirits, they said that you will know them by their fruits. As soon as you begin to be a little more spirit-driven, and how do you get to be a little more spirit-driven? Spend more time in the spirit and less time in the flesh. Get out of that flesh. Get out of your flesh. Get out of your flesh. It feels good to be able to get mad and go off. Oh, yeah, it does. Sleep better. Yelling and hooping and carrying on. It makes you tired and you can lay down. But it's a whole lot more peaceful to forgive and let God work that thing out and go on about your business. A little more spirit-led life where you're a little more about, what about this? Every awesome person of God I see throughout the Bible, I see this. God, should I go in? Yes, go in. God, should I go in and fight? No, don't go. Every time they went through this whole deal, everything worked out perfect. Should I go in? Yes, go. Won the battle. <laughs> should I go in? No. Uh, I'm going to go in anyway. Oh, that's bad. Everybody got slaughtered. And it's even okay to say, God, if, if this is you, can we make the ground wet and my bed dry? It'd be your fault if the sprinklers go off in the middle of the night and you, but you got your answer. It's okay to ask God, God, just give me, give me a verification. Just, just let me know this is you. He may take you back to Galatians chapter five. Mm -hmm. What is spirit? What is spirit? What is it? It's honorable. It's good. It doesn't lie. It doesn't hurt people. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. Hmm. Well, God, see, they got one out of seven. Well, may not be, may not be for you. Spirit-led life. I know some of you are, are kind of going, oh, you know, I already know that. Well, then you should start using it. That'd be best. Because until we start bringing this thing up to another level, we're getting defeated by the same old stupid stuff time and time again. It's because you knew what to do and didn't do it. I do not stick my hand in a fire anymore. That one good time was plenty. So you don't have to tell me anymore, Scott, don't stick your hand in the fire. It may, act, it may happen by accident, but it ain't because I did it on purpose. The devil is coming around to some of us in relationships and friendships and doing this same thing over and over and over again. And we welcome it in and we do it the same way we did the last one. The same way, same way we say, well, maybe this one will be different. Galatians 5.22 says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. If he didn't say anything else in it, if he stopped at love, it'd be tough to walk it, wouldn't it? It would be for me. I mean, I know you guys are further along than I am, but I'm just going to tell you the truth. It'd be hard for me to just completely walk out love every time. Joy, peace. How many of you girls really want to get hooked up with a guy who walks around and gets all done? Oh, all right. Are you happy? Are you happy we're good? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That's going to be an awesome marriage. Long suffering, you know. 
kindness. You'd be surprised how many Christian men treat their wives terrible. 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 I'm shocked by it. Matter of fact, a lot of times, a lot of times you want to say something, but it, you know, gentleness, self control against such there is no law. There's no law. There's not any law saying, whoa, Miss Quill, slow down a little bit of this love stuff. You've been too good. <laughs> no. I keep on loving. There's no law against joy. You can be as happy in the Holy Ghost as you can stand. Doesn't matter if anybody else can stand as much of it. You can. You can have as much peace as you want. You know, a crazy amount of peace. You can, be, you can be in all this turmoil and still just be long-suffering and just have peace. I can be as good to people in kindness as I want. I can be faithful. And I can be gentle. And I can have self-control. That just explained the best, the perfect husband, wife, best friend ever. If you've got that, if you've got five, Galatians 5, if you've got that, you've got an awesome friend. They're going to be patient with you. They're going to love you. They're going to have fun with you. They're going to laugh when you laugh, cry when you cry. They're going to be there. And everything that you've ever shared is going to be so secret. Would never say something that would hurt you. And you know what? Nobody would ever be comfortable coming up to your best friend and saying something bad about you. I read that post on Facebook. I said, <clears throat> right there. It doesn't surprise me that people come around and talk bad about me. It surprises me that they were comfortable to come up to you and say it. Ooh. That's, so, that's just a little bit of a red flag right there. Maybe, I, maybe we're not where I thought we were. It surprises me that they're comfortable saying it to you. Amen. So then those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires and we live in the spirit. Let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. <laughs> not everyone that comes into your life is supposed to imitate you. Wow. Wow. People come into your life for different reasons. Some are there to help. Some are there to hurt. Your thing is, is to know which side they're on when they get there. The enemy does send people into your life. I mean, it just happens. It happens to me over and over. Kind-hearted people, you got the, you got the struggle. You know, you're, you're probably going to have the worst time figuring out a lot of times I wish I was just one of those real deep thinkers where I could just see you coming up the aisle and go, mm-hmm. I bet you do. Mm-hmm. But I miss it every time. Pastor, I just love the way you preach. Yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead. Go eat. Let's go lunch together. Next thing you know, there's a nasty rumor going around. Well, who said that? Who didn't? Your life gets a whole lot smoother when you start building you some boundary lines around you. Some of your boundaries are going to have to be when to say yes, when to say no not only to just friendships and relationships, but to everything. How many of you work too much doing everything everybody asks for? There's no bottom. There's no, uh, I, you could be building a house right now. Hey, you got time to run the bus to St. Louis? Oh, yeah. <laughs> could you bake three cakes for the women's social? 
Oh, yeah, sure, when is it? Uh, six, eight, six o'clock tonight. Yeah. Takers, suckers. <laughs> Cut them off. It's eight o'clock. Nick, we may have to go with a little bigger clock. <laughs> I could wear my glasses, but then I don't look as smart. I hope this is I hope this is helping. Because believe me, you don't want to spend another three months, six months, a year going down a terrible road that's never going to get any better. You don't want to have to keep answering to this relationship that is so bad for you. Okay. Let me back up. Pastor Scott did not just encourage a bunch of people, the whole church, to get a divorce. (laughs) Just saying. Let's just get that out there. That's not at all what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about if you have a bad relationship, let's start looking for the fruits of the Spirit. What did you see in them to begin with? And start to work with that. You have to be honest with each other. It's going to hurt. It's going to sting. Dawn has no problem being honest with me. Sometimes I think go, whoop. Then the shower curtain thing came. Thanks to Marcy. <laughs> Seemed like Marcy would say it and Dawn go, see, you do that. Uh, shocked me too. I thought I was perfect at home. I was shocked. But let's just talk about my good qualities. She left me alone. I was able to watch TV again. (laughs) Some of y'all got that. It hit when you go home. (laughs) Be honest with each other. Talk to each other. Communication is the most important thing. You'll find out a lot about people if... You get past all this lovey-dovey goosebump stuff and start asking some questions. What's your finances like? How many girlfriends have you had this year? There's no bad question except for the one you didn't ask. And the one that you're passive about now will be your captivity later. Amen? Amen? I said, the thing that you are passive about right now will be your captivity later. I wish I wrote that, but I didn't. My good stuff is like, what the world? (laughs) Father, I pray for relationships. I pray for friendships. God, I pray that we begin to open up our spiritual lives and, and that we begin to let the spirit come to the top over the soul man, all the emotions and the, and the flesh. God, let that spirit man rise up inside us as we grow in the word and as we begin to use the word as the shield that goes out in front of us. I pray, God, that truth begins to settle in inside us. I'm looking for that, that Garden of Eden here. I'm looking for that life, that voluptuous life that you promised over and over and over in your Bible. I see it over and over, this abundant, joy-filled, love-overflowing life that is promised throughout your word. And God, I don't want to miss another day of it. I want to wake up in your presence. I want to go to sleep in your presence. And I want my day to be filled from beginning to end with the presence of the Holy Spirit and my Father and my Savior guiding and speaking into my life and and telling me, showing me each way I need to go. Who should I let into my life? Who should I not? God, what have you called me to? Where have you called me to? And who have you called me to? 
God, if it's going to be an intimate relationship, let me go into it with the full knowledge that whatever starts from here will be the two of us becoming one person. Are they who I want to be? And am I who they want to be as the two of us become one person? Hmm. So Father, you have empowered us with this wisdom and knowledge and understanding through the Holy Spirit. You have left us the manual on how to operate in this incredible power you've placed inside us. So God, continue to speak to us, lead us, guide us, Holy Spirit, in our everyday lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming tonight. It's okay to limp out of here. <laughs> I will. You know it's good when it's this.